Over the years of photography, I've amassed thousands of images. For a long time, my workflow for managing all of them was much like how my brain works, all over the place. Since I mostly work alone, I figured it didn't matter as long as I understood how it worked. But as time passed and my photo collection grew, I started dreading the inevitable moment when I'd realize my disorganized approach wasn't sustainable. A few years ago, that moment eventually arrived. I remember it like it was yesterday. A cold, wintry day in the city. I was ready to edit some photos from my trip to Morocco. Everything was going smoothly. Until... It's not the first time this happened. I'll just plug it back in and it'll show up again. But it never showed up. Pit in my stomach grew as I realized what just happened. My drive just got cooked. Two months of photos lost. It's not the worst that could happen, but maybe I'm just saying that to make myself feel better. I thankfully didn't lose anything from my Morocco trip because I did back those photos up. I never wanted this to happen to me again, so I made it a priority to back up my photos consistently. Not just something I do when I happen to remember. Losing work to an unbacked hard drive that fails, it's a photographer's worst nightmare. It's a wake-up call to many of us to get our shit together so that it never happens again. I'm currently in Prague for Fujifilm's X Summit, and I've been getting a lot of photos here with the newly announced Fujifilm GFX 100 RF. But right now, it's time to offload some photos from my SD card and back up my photos. I'll first copy the photos off the SD card to my SSD that I edit off of. I have one of these for every year of shooting street photography. And when it comes to folder structure, it's pretty simple. I keep my photos organized by year, then by month, and finally, the day with the general location that I was shooting in. Now, I just need to back up these photos. I could leave them on the SD card, but eventually, I need to format these cards so I can keep using them. Having another secondary SSD to back up to, something I've done in the past as well, and still do, but it's not the safest option in the event that I possibly lose this drive, or this drive fails as well. The safest and most reliable system that I've found is using a NAS system. NAS, not to be confused with NOS, the wrapper, stands for Network Attached Storage. Functions as my own personal server that lives all the way back at my apartment in Brooklyn, and I can access it from anywhere that I have an internet connection. This particular model that I use is from Synology. This is the Synology NAS DS923+. Plus. With the Synology NAS system running from my apartment back in New York, I'm able to access my entire archive of photos and back up these new images all the way to my hard drives that are halfway across the world. Synology specializes in making NAS systems for professionals, and many photographers swear by them. I want to thank Synology for sponsoring this video and reminding you all to back up your photos, because today is World Backup Day. So I make sure that the photos are still on my SD card and on my SSD while I'm transferring. You may have heard this before, but this is called the 3-2-1 rule. And it's a guiding principle to have a reliable and redundant backup of your work. It involves having three copies of your data at all times. Two copies on two different drives with one copy located off-site. And it's important to have this during the transfer process because it's usually when you're transferring a large amount of files that drives can corrupt. And when it comes to data protection due to hard drive failure, that's where the NAS system really shines. These hard drives are set up in a RAID configuration. Without getting too technical, mostly because I don't really know how to explain it, a RAID system workflow creates multiple copies of my data across different drives. This redundancy is crucial because it means my photos are safe when it comes to hardware failure. 
I use a RAID 5 configuration, which is somewhere of a sweet spot between having enough storage space to work with, but also having decent protection. Plenty of YouTube videos that go super in depth into the technical side of RAID system configurations. I highly suggest you to check those out to see which you know configuration would work best for you. Uploading files to the cloud on the go isn't anything revolutionary, but being able to send my photos directly to a hard drive that I personally own, that's physically in my apartment, it gives me the reassurance that my photos are safe more than any other option I've tried. I honestly feel like I don't maximize everything that the Synology NAS system offers, and that's because there's an entire operating system built into it. It's basically a computer with its own app store where you can install different applications depending on your workflow needs. A Photos app, the ability to fully automate your NAS system so that it backs up at a certain time on a consistent schedule. There are so many things that this thing can do. It's honestly a little bit overwhelming. So I use my NAS system in pretty much the most bare bones way possible. And that's simply using it as a RAID storage system that I can access from anywhere. And honestly, that's just enough for what I need right now. Something I plan on doing in the future is adding a second NAS system that I would keep off-site in a different location. That would let me follow the 3 to one rule at all stages of my workflow and pretty much give me the highest level of data protection I could possibly get. So the real beauty of this system is its flexibility. You can start pretty small like how I am right now and expand as your data protection needs grow. It can be a little daunting at first setting up something like this, um, but you know the time spent in getting it right is going to pay off in so many ways and your future self will thank you for it. Mm -hmm.